I guess a year ago, we came up with a crazy idea, something that we may not have even thought would happen, but it has. And we've been on a journey as, as a, a small group. I knew it was always going to be a challenge. Um, I didn't quite realise how much of a challenge that it was going to be, having never done anything really like this before. Nothing about this trip was easy. That was by far the hardest thing I've ever done, in a sentence. never underestimate altitude and about taking the time to go up and down and acclimatise it really is what will be a success or not. watching John sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, groups go through three stages where you're norming, storming and forming. So we're, we're, we'll see how that goes. I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the fear of the unknown, um, going, going, going somewhere that's so isolated, no one else will, will, will be there. Um, that's, that's, that's probably the scariest. Um, being away from my lad, being away from, from the family, you know, uh, leaving everything here, um, and not being able to contact will be, will be difficult. Um, but no, I, I think I'm more excited than anything else, Drew. We're on our own. That's the big thing. We haven't got the support this time. We had the support when we're in Killy. We haven't got that now. So there's a lot of challenges, but yes, yeah, seriously excited, mate. It's going to be awesome. Biggest thing for me, seeing all your pretty faces this morning and knowing that we've got this together. It's going to be one hell of a challenge, but can't wait, mate. I've never seen so much equipment be packed. It's, oh, mate, it's nuts, but hey, let's do it. To really hit home the length of time we're away from the family, the length of time I'm away from business. Missing the family is my biggest um, gripe at the moment. Uh, it's in there. We're going to do it. I don't do. I don't. I don't do anything. Enter anything to fail. We're going to do it. The way that we're going to keep ourselves safe is you're going to try and stay on your feet, you know, so, and I'm going to try and help you to walk well and stay on your feet, because if you fall over, more likely you know, right? Well, you would have marched under you at Percula. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm going to try and help you to do. Go slow, finish strong. I'll come back, it's what I get there. <laughs> <laughs> So every trip has to have a challenge, doesn't it? And it seems that this one started right at the airport as we're trying to check in. And so we're now rushing to try and get Esther sorted so we can get into the States to transit through to get down to Chile. Fingers crossed. So what we haven't been told is that we need an Esther to, um, to take with us into America. And uh, we've got to wait and see whether they are authorized in time and at the moment it's authorized pending so um so if it doesn't come within the next half an hour then the check-in closes and we have to go to the ticket office and try and get on the next available flight Feeling, feeling quite relaxed about it to be fair. So John's gone 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 through the itinerary, we know what, what we're doing. Um, I think he's got some more things to sort out with the car when we get there. Um, but that's it's John's ish, I'm, I'm just I'm just following, so um, no, excited. We're here, 24 hours later than we expected to be. Um, but hey, there's lots of challenges that we're gonna be facing and it's how we overcome those challenges that is a test of our character. Um, and uh, that, that's what I'm going to say anyway, that's my excuse. But for the people who we are raising this money for, then um, their challenges they have to face every day. 
and every day and every day and every day and they're far worse than just missing a plane and so that keeps us going keeps us remembering that we can just chill out and, and overcome and carry on going and, uh, and the reason why we're doing it is um, to help extend the life of the children and young people's lives in the interest. So sometimes, even when it's a bit stressful, things work out. We're just running through the airport, we're actually getting on the plane. Woohoo! Well, after starting out at uh, 7.30 Saturday morning, Greg picked me up. It is now 6.30 Monday evening, and we are in Kopiopu in what is can only be described as an elaborate uh, hangar in the middle of the desert. Uh, finally going to get our, to our final destination, which is a hotel uh, near the uh, base of the uh, volcano. And uh, yeah, after a couple of uh, bumps in the road, I'm sure there's a few more of them to come. We're finally here. It's been a long, long journey. So we're here, finally, in the taxi, on the way to the hotel. John, how easy was that journey, mate? Oh, a piece of game. No, I like game. Steve, how are we feeling? Well, to start out at 7.30 Saturday morning at the Red Carlin Review, which we know 7 o'clock on the evening, Chris, after you've uh, spent the best part of three days with us, how are you feeling about taking us up this mountain, mate? Who are you most apprehensive about? <laughs> 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 oh, come on. It's been a challenge to get here, to be fair. It took us three days, 21 hours of flying, lots of queuing. Uh, we've now got a nine hour drive to the uh, foot of the volcano where we will uh, set up camp. I'll learn how to put up a tent and uh, then we'll wake up early hours in the morning and start our first climb to 4,000 feet. Uh, those climbs are designed to acclimatize us before we actually attempt to summit. The, the Amazonian uh, worm. Yeah. When you go to the to the river, it uh, sometimes tries to get inside by your penis. Yes. Yeah. How do we stop this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. What do we do? Don't know. It's you just keep it in your trousers. <laughs> just, just, just in a hot spring, though. No. You just have to swim like this. <laughs> you have to tie a knot. Don't swim in the hot. In the hut, one in the hut. That's it. Yeah. Shit. There is a one inside that one. So. Oh. I don't want to get one, in any of them now. I don't want to go on. <laughs> okay. Oh. What day are we on? Three. Three. One, one at the mountain. Three but, total. One at the mountain. So, first day was a challenge. <coughs> Good old Esther. Shut up, Chris. Chris, it's just... <laughs> can I bring it on? Uh, hmm. <laughs> so we're here. We are at Laguna Santa Rosa. I uh, hope you like my Spanish. Forgive me if you are Spanish. Um, so here is uh, a quick look at what we are looking at. So it's morning of the 25th, uh, 
and our first night in camp, our first night at altitude. And we've all slept a little bit differently. Um, I've not slept great. John's suffering this morning, which is not great. Hopefully that'll clear up as we get the lungs burning off this morning. Um, but waking up to these views is just honestly something else. It's absolutely incredible. We are so, so lucky to have this. It's, uh, yeah, it really is something else. Another walk today up to four and a half thousand feet. Meters. Yeah. Say again. Four and a half thousand meters. Four and a half thousand meters. Sorry, undercutting myself there. Um, yeah, we'll do that and uh, enjoy it, hopefully. <laughs> I can't believe that's just come out of my lips, to be fair. <laughs> As you can see, John has got me now my special cup. Don't panic. Um, I feel a lot better than I, uh, I think I feel a lot better than I did um, I, on Killy. Um, absolutely beautiful little spot right from where we are now. So no driving today. We are literally just heading straight off for a hike. And hopefully it'll be a good way of getting the lungs going, getting the body adjusted, then drop back down and rest this afternoon. Really hoping John picks up. Um, we had enough troubles with John not feeling great on Killy. I hope this isn't the start of that. Um, let's just hope it, it clears up really quickly. It's a glorious morning, the sun's out. Uh, it's fresh, but it's, uh, it's really nice. So um, yeah, we're going up that thing over there. Yeah. Very excited. Um, don't know what to expect still really. <laughs> just follow John. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know whether I want to follow John anymore. <laughs> a little bit broken, waking up, clicking into thought process. But uh, on the whole, yeah. Uh, I'm feeling good today. You know, I had a good night's sleep and, uh, you know, a bit intermittent, but that's normal with altitude. So. Today's a shakedown day. Today's like our first day out. So everyone's just ironing out the wrinkles, sorting out clothing, making sure they're wearing enough, not too much, and making sure everything works, you know. So so today's just a mellow day. I don't expect much from it. You know, I'm not sure that we'll get to the top, but I'm not bothered either. Hey, High altitude flatulent emissions. And they cut its cause because your gut is a big muscle. And like all your muscles, it needs oxygen to work. And you when you're at altitude, you have less oxygen. And so it works less well, so it creates more gas. So essentially, how would you sum that up, Greg? Uh, it's, it's a real posh technical way of saying that you're far more when you're higher up. Step at a time, he says. I have dragged every bit of willpower, every bit of energy, and uh, I'm at the top. Sweet. Bit of food, fucking dried food at that. And asleep. Look at that. Stick your fucking mouth in for like your ass. They sent me. That was. I used to say boxing was the hardest thing I've ever done. I can't really remember, Killy. I must have put it to the back of my mind. John seems to think that was 
Not as hard as Kelly. There's no point doing a challenge. I don't want it to make challenges make people feel like this, but there's no point doing a challenge if you don't take yourself right outside of your comfort zone. And uh, that's what I've done today. So we got to bed last night and I just couldn't sleep. Not only couldn't I sleep, I couldn't breathe either. <coughs> so, I'm 52 years old. <coughs> For the first time in my life, I had a panic attack. My head started saying stuff. It was negative that was. We need to pack up now, we need to go home. You can't breathe. You can't do this, you need to stop. And most of you know I am stubborn. And I do say that I'm strong mentally. So every time that happened, I started to think through what my mind was trying to tell me. Challenge, challenge it. Thankfully I won. But it took seven hours. <laughs> You should never underestimate altitude. And about taking the time to go up and down and acclimatise, it really is what will be a success or not. So for those who think that I could just get on and do stuff and, and I'm invincible, I'm not. This is just the first mountain. <laughs> we got up and then we started the mountain climb. And this is supposed to be the easy one. We're not going to give up. We may change some things around. Uh, we may not get to the top of our Castel Salado, but we're overcoming lots, <laughs> lots of personal, physical, emotional challenges. Next place now, the next Laguna, where there's hot springs. Hey. Um, so, uh, so Greg's really looking forward to them, and uh, we've got some rest, and I think that's what we need as well. Getting ourselves acclimatised, so important, and being able to take that time to do that is what's going to help us hopefully get to the top. No, get to the top. We are positive. <laughs> Feeling tired, Stuart. Feeling tired. I'm just getting a, a nice bit of kip on this really comfortable door frame. <laughs> Hello. How are we feeling? Fantastic. Ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing 
Saturday night. <laughs> Steve's a jewel. Steve. Well, I must admit, I was really looking forward to tomorrow. Then I've looked at the map. Now I'm thinking it's going to be incredibly painful. But yeah, I don't want to say that to Greg because Greg will cry. Um, so I'm just going to wait for Greg to cry on the hill. It's going to be much more fun. But uh, these people are leaving behind. They're going to have a nice rest day, nice little walk, nice little exercise. Greg, ready to uh, be beasted on the mountain? Apparently. <laughs> have I got a choice? No. Excellent. Steve, we're showing attention. Did you put a smile on your face? I don't look a fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> up at the crack of dawn, four o'clock, scrammed some breakfast, left camp about five-ish, five -ish, uh, in minus, minus degrees. Um, so we're going up, is it San Francisco, is it? San Francisco. Um, I've no idea how, how high we are, but we're probably about 40 minutes in. Anyway, just under an hour in, and I'm feeling good to be fair. We've got a fantastic view. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, I, I, I just said, I, I feel like pinching myself. I can't believe that this is what I'm actually seeing. Um, as you can see, it's still pretty cold. Uh, but no, we're doing, we're doing good, I think. We've got up to 5,000, about 5,200 meters. Good start. And we've got about 900 meters of up to go. It's going to get a bit steeper now, so. Uh, but what a beautiful morning. Great to be alive. <laughs> there is something to be said for an alpine start, being up here and watching the sun come up, this beautiful view appear around us. Yes, it's painful when the alarm goes off and it's frosty when you're making your breakfast, but my God, is it worth it? So yeah, we're all in good form. We've even got a friend with us uh, on the, the walk this morning. Um, so yeah, it's a great day. We are absolutely loving it. So uh, yeah, the hard work starts now. Here we go. Got another rest day ahead of us. Three of the party have gone off to do San Fran. That's a, a mountain that stands 6,000 meters tall um, as part of their preparation for Oshkosh, the largest volcano in the world, live, that is as well. Um, me and John struggled on our first practice uh, with various uh, colds and my knees, etc. So a second day of rest will prepare us that much better to complete the mountain we came here to climb. I'm not one to exaggerate. That was tough. Bloody hell. It's so, so tough. Uh, gutting that Greg had to turn back part way, well, most of the way, he got most of the way up here and then had to turn back. Um, thankfully, our fabulous friend Sophia stayed with me, held her patience while I got through the last little bit. Um, so, yeah, we got up here, flying the flag as it were for free and rest. Feeling absolutely amazing now. So, yeah, let's get back down, back to the boys, and uh, yeah, let's go for it. Well, while well, the lads are up in the uh, up in the gods, we're in a little pod. Mm. My muscles need this kid. Whoa. As we drive closer and get closer to uh, the mountain, it's getting bigger and I don't quite like that, to be honest. <laughs> We've just arrived at Atacama Base Camp, Atacama Refuge, which is the refuge you can see behind, the tin shed. Um, and this is base camp for Ocos del Salado. So the aim is that we spend a couple of days here because we're at 5,200 meters and the next one is at 5,800 so we'll do some walks up but we're going to camp here uh, for a bit just to acclimatize because the altitude is what is causing um, all of the problems. 
my bloody nose and everything was starting to get better, but I've developed, uh, which I think is tonsillitis. So that's not great. Um, but thankfully, uh, our good old friend, Dr. Ben, um, helped us to get some uh, tablets for altitude uh, before we left, and some of those treat tonsillitis. So this is it. Really pleased to hear you. Fighting fit. He's absolutely fighting fit. <laughs> I think he even said he loves mountains now. And so, uh, so yes, here we go. This is it. We're here. Next one. Off we go. Oh. I'm glad to be here. This is where I want to be. Base camp feels like we're going to go and do it now. It's been a long road. Eight days. And, uh, Oh, does he? <laughs> Another twist today. This trek was always going to be uh, twists and turns, and our good friend John has had to go down. So it's Sunday morning, and I'm back down at Laguna Verde. Um, the other four are still up at the base camp and are hoping to continue. Uh, to summit uh, but this cold that I've developed since Monday has now turned into tonsillitis and even though I got up to the base camp but it was just unsafe for me to be there fortunately, blessedly um, I believe uh, God provided a car that arrived to drop off some of the people uh, another guide who was staying at the Laguna and he uh, said that he'd give me a lift back. So, obviously very difficult, very uh, emotional. Um, we've been going through this together for the last year, planned all of this, um, got everybody else here, and then just can't complete the last bit, but <clears throat> health is better. And after my last mountain challenge, then uh, I knew it was time to stop. So there you go. It's uh, it's never easy when you're trying to do a challenge. That's why they call it challenging. <laughs> this morning's feeling tough. What the hell is going on with me? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm completely blown out my ass, but it's fucking close. How are you doing, Greg? It's tough. Honestly, this height messes with your emotions, your mind. I think I said to people before we came, fitness wasn't really key. Oh my God, how wrong, how wrong was I? I think the mind obviously is the major uh, tool in the box for fitness. And to see that thing behind, well, sorry to coin a phrase, but that's like a fucking oasis in the desert, man. You're wrong, my friend. That's, that was tough. Emotions were high. I can't remember the last time I cried hiking, but, yeah, the thought of someone cheering me on got me up there, mate, and uh, that's what it's about. We'll all get each other up. Love you, man. Okay, so we're at the uh, refuge at 5837. We've all had, I think all of us have felt pretty rough this morning. It was... Uh, it was a very cold night last night in the tent and we all had to get up in the dark and uh, frost-filled tents and uh, get our breakfast, which is all a bit logistical, uh, trying to get the stove to work with freezing temperatures and stuff. So anyway, we, we did that. We come up with uh, and come up like a train, particularly Steve. We had to keep winding him back in because he wanted to run off up. Uh, we're now higher than the top of Kilimanjaro, which is pretty cool. And uh, up ahead of us is where we were, we were hoping to go. We've just been talking to some very nice German couple that have been staying up here um, at the refuge for the last five days. And uh, the, the route from here would follow the track up there that you can see. And then you can just see a little track heading up over there. And then it would head up that grey streak up there. So which is apparently really loose grease. It'd be pretty hard work actually going up there. And that takes you up to about 6,400 metres where the snow patch is. And that's the current new 
normal route is going up up there. Now that snow um, has been through multiple melt freeze processes, which means it's basically snow ice. So um, it'd be really slippery. Um, people that are good mountaineers would find it difficult and uh, potentially quite serious, you know. So um, that isn't an option for us, uh, but that is the way that people go now. Um, the other option is to go up, and we're hoping to do this tomorrow, go up to that, um, where that path goes off and go up over to the right there. And there's a little refuge up there that's at 6,100 meters. That is the highest um, refuge uh, or mountain hut in the world. There's nowhere anywhere as high as that. Um, and uh, so that'll be really cool. So what our new plan is to walk, go back down, we're going to go have some dinner, get acclimatised, get a good rest, come back up tomorrow, and hopefully our bodies will have adjusted a little bit more. And we're going to go up there, up to 6,100 metres, we hope, uh, and uh, go and visit the refuge, or, or maybe we'll, if we, well, we can make a call when we go up here. Uh, maybe we'll try and get up the scree there, and we could even get up 6,400 metres, potentially. Uh, on the highest active volcano in the world, which is pretty cool for a load of old duffers, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, so, so you know, we're, we're pretty stoked. Disappointed not to be getting to the top, but talking to the people, even like really experienced mountaineers, have been coming down saying, this is proper gnarly, you know, and they're absolutely in bits at the end of their uh, summit attempts. So, so for us, this will be a real big win, and uh, we've got we can go out with a head held high, you know. So that's great. It's impossible, um, which is gutting, to be honest with you. Um, it means that we probably won't summit tomorrow. Uh, we're going to try our hardest to get as high as possible. Um, we don't know what that will will be, but we're going to stay safe. So it's Monday, the 30th of January. So feeling a bit better, so um, cold. Uh, seems to be on its way out. Um, throat still sore with tonsillitis. Um, still on the antibiotics. So uh, I think uh, hopefully those will start to kick in. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a, a challenge down here as well. Um, I know it's been a challenge for the guys at the top and uh, and I think that they are looking forward to getting as high as they can and then coming down. So this is it. Today is the day. The day we are going to get as high as we can on Ocos del Salado to proudly carry the free at last flag. It's pretty easy to say this has been a bit of a challenge this whole trip, but we're in it together. Four of us going up today are heading up this morning and uh, we'll get as high as we can. They always say adventures should be challenging. This one's been challenging right from like the start. It's kind of a piss take. Um, but yeah, let's just hope we have a good last day. Get up there and uh, enjoy a great walk up this beautiful mountain. Okay, so uh, just stripping off, completely fatigued uh, after uh, Doing a hassle summit. Um, I forgot I got this hand. <laughs> it, just, it just feels like they're with me. So, another fucking zombie story. From stupid fucking turn on the water once. I got me because I've got me top of me. Honestly, it's got to be a record, uh, record advert deal somewhere. Boom. Yeah, so we walk and skiddy gravel and this is how I breathe because you cannot just get your breath and the steepness of the climb as well makes it really hard.
we've got to the end of our journey, our, our challenge, which has been a real challenge, both in terms of all of the planning, right through to the actual physical journey. There's been several toughest moments, having panic attacks in the night when I couldn't breathe, through to seeing pictures of the four of you carrying the flag or Bacos, um, and and not being able to do it and having to go down um, because of my health. Um, re really hard, really tough, because normally I'd be the person that would just keep going regardless. That was by far the hardest thing I've ever done, in a sentence. Obviously, making myself get up there when we were told we couldn't summit by our expert guide uh, due to not having the equipment and the conditions at the top or near the top. Being told by experienced climbers who had failed as well that we couldn't do it um, was completely demoralising. I only came for one thing and that was to uh, complete the challenge. But uh, to get that high and have my body feel like I did, it, it, it felt like I'd, it felt like I'd uh, achieved what I'd come to do and that was challenge myself to the extreme. Proudest moments even without being there is seeing the four uh, companions of mine who came along actually managed to get the flag up to 6,100 metres. Um, we didn't think we would um, but were exceptionally proud of the guys to, to see that they, they carried on and they raised the flag for free at last. The high point was, well, certainly having that, having that shot when we, when we got to 6-1. Uh, that, was, that was what we wanted to do. It wasn't where we wanted to do it. Um, but knowing that we'd achieved something that was, that was difficult um, and it was for a reason and it was a, a good reason, um, that, was, that was pretty good. I knew it was always going to be a challenge. Um, I didn't quite realise how much of a challenge that it was going to be, having never done anything really like this before. So having completed it um, as safely as possible, um, yeah, um, I think we've done something pretty, pretty special to be fair. The feeling of elation and, and, and what we've done is, is um, well, we've, we've done something really, really good. Nothing about this trip was easy. I didn't know how I would be physically. I knew I'd be pretty decent. I love mountains, it's my happy place. It's why people don't think about supporting me doing crazy things like this, because they think it's a holiday. It's not, it's so tough, it's, it's crazy. Um, I had one day that I was really bad with altitude, and I've got to say massive thank you to, to Chris, Kwana, to Greg, to help me up it. Um, I honestly didn't think I was going to. That was the first time I shed tears. Second time was when you decided to clear off the mountain and couldn't be bothered to join us for the rest of it. Um, I think that was mainly fear of what Jan was going to do to me when we got back. Um, but yeah, it was tough. It was emotionally tough, but it was amazing. What an achievement. To literally know everything was on us this time. It was a big, big difference. It was a much more of a challenge. And I think also knowing that we hadn't got support, that was a big thing, especially when things medically started to go wrong. We were all worried because we were like, what the hell should we do? We hadn't got the team around us. And I think that's the biggest thing. It was just not having that support. We were on our own. I was interested to see how the guys would turn out. Um, and they turned out pretty much as expected. I was not sure how high we'd get a lot of people that hadn't been all that high before, not been in the mountains much before. Um, you know, you might say, oh, well, we've been up Kilimanjaro. Well, as, as they've said, really, Kilimanjaro's, yes, it's big, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other, whereas where we went this time, it was a lot more remote, a lot more, um, more technical, more demanding in every way. You know, all the logistics were way more complicated. Uh, you know, order of magnitude bigger than going up Kilimanjaro. We've, we've been having different, different conversations about why we've come here and what we're doing here. Um, and a lot of it comes down to purpose really and we all find purpose in, in lots of different things in this world. Purpose doesn't require you to be successful in every 
um, test or challenge that you put yourself to. It just requires you to make a difference. We didn't summit our hostel Salado, but we got to 6,100 meters. It was a really difficult challenge, um, but I think we've done something really, really special. I am still completely gutted that we couldn't safely as a team summit our Costel Salado. But the biggest gutting thing was we didn't do it together. We didn't do the whole trip together. Um, we got as high as we could with the team that we got, but yeah, I would have loved us all to get up there, mate. There's nothing about these mountains that are easy. Um, the altitudes are just nuts. Um, you've got to be a proper mountaineer to summit it. The difference with it being so quiet was it was so much nicer because it was just us as a group. It very much felt that way. Um, where when we did Killy, it was insane. It was like you're on a bus route. Um, so having that quietness was really, really special. None of it's easy, none of it's fun. We're actually doing something that's incredibly tough and putting ourselves out there to make a difference to people who need that help. Um, I come from a very privileged background and haven't had to worry too much. I don't have to worry now. I've got fresh air whenever I want it. Um, the kids that we're trying to help need that help and need that support and hopefully we can leave a lasting legacy from the work that we're doing to change their lives forever. I've always believed that the uh, going to the top of a mountain is, is optional, coming back down is mandatory. We talked about that as a team, uh, that our main aim was to come back down and be safe and we were all very much aware that we were in a very remote place even getting the car fixed if it was broken uh, was not going to be an easy job um, let alone um, us you know getting us out of any trouble so I was very much aware that I wanted to try and keep us um, quite well within what I thought were our capabilities rather than pushing the limits of them I know the guys felt that they pushed really hard, and they did, uh, for, for their level of ability and uh, experience. Waking up with ice on the outside of your sleeping bag, not being able to do your boots up because your fingers felt three times the size that they were, uh, shitting in the hole, just a big fat fucking though. I was packing my stuff away and I am glad to tell you that the mountain stuff that I have, yeah, all very modest and, uh, you know, not the best gear in the world, but I'm packing it away for the last time. The only time that, that stuff will be coming out of that bag is to go on a wet dog walk. I guess a year ago, we came up with a crazy idea, something that we may not have even thought would happen, but it has and we've been on a journey as, as a, a small group. You know, it's not about um, a jolly and putting us through it, which it has been a tough challenge for us all. Um, it's about recognising that we're doing something to, to improve the lives of the children and young people in each of us, and that's what we are doing. So yes, it's been tough, it's been hard, but we've got there. Uh, we've got to the end of the two weeks. We're ready to come home, definitely ready to come home. And, uh, and we just want to thank you all for your amazing support over the last two weeks. Um, it, it, we wouldn't have been able to, to keep going without knowing that you were there for us. And, uh, and we just thank you on behalf of the kids at Free Last. <laughs>